On December 9, 1957, an incredible event occurred within the UK. Now known as the Silpho Saucer Incident, it has become known within UFO enthusiast circles as the UK's Roswell. It was a story that was first released within the Yorkshire Post. It told of a mystery disc that was found on the Yorkshire Moors. Scarborough businessman Frank Dickinson, along with two friends, were driving through a place known as Reesty Hill, near the village of Silpho, when their car mysteriously stalled as a glowing object appeared in the sky above them, subsequently landing in the Borax Forest. Mr. Dickinson and his friends bravely pursued the downed craft and found a mysterious metallic saucer in a patch of freshly cindered bracken. Amazingly, when the artifact was cut open, apparently a tiny book was found within made of 17 thin copper sheets covered in 2,000 unknown hieroglyphs. Interestingly, similar hieroglyphics were also supposedly found among the wreckage of the UFO that allegedly crashed at Roswell, New Mexico in June 1947. The remains of the Silpho Moore object were subsequently sent to a London laboratory for examination in 1963, including a perplexing fused section of the metal and plastic which was apparently from the outer casing. Gordon Claringbull, a funded academic from the Natural History Museum who specialized in meteorites and explosives, said in a memo to the Science Museum that he was prepared to wager anything that the pieces of metal were made on Earth. However, although the scientific community was predictably skeptical, Air Chief Marshal Lord Dowding, who led the RAF during the Battle of Britain during World War II, examined the Silpho saucer in 1958. He actually believed it was genuine. Describing it as a quote, miniature computer piloted flying saucer, Lord Dowding was openly convinced it was a genuine artifact from space, according to the report in the Yorkshire Post. The results of the analysis found that the artifacts contained an unusually pure set of metals, cast in highly specific ways, fueling the UFO community's interest in the object's fragments. Will more modern specific analysis shed more light on this enigmatic object's origins? We will keep you posted on any future developments. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. In the Museum of the Unexplained in Reed Spring, Missouri, a rather peculiar artifact can be found. Known as the Bob White Artifact, Bob was driving with a friend down a Colorado highway one night in 1985, when they would both experience a close encounter. As the craft flew over Bob's head, according to Bob, it dropped him a gift, an object which has caused Bob numerous issues. Quote, I don't know about you, but as for me, every time I hear people from Skeptic Magazine lying through their teeth, it makes me sick. They say they have never seen any hard evidence of UFOs. This is only true because they refuse to look at this, a piece of a UFO. So the next time you see the Skeptic Magazine people on Larry King or some other TV program saying there is no physical evidence, you will know they are lying. I have challenged them to debate me, but they are afraid. So, Skeptic Magazine, you have been exposed for the fraud that you are. That was a statement made by Bob White in the late 90s. He further claimed that in 1996, he was flown to the classified Los Alamos National Laboratory for a detailed analysis of his evidence. White was told by senior staff that the object he recovered was indeed of extraterrestrial origin also confessing to have successfully collected another object similar to his before. Although the officials fervently denied these claims, in 2000, Bob managed to acquire U.S. Army documents dating from the 1940s titled UFOs in Denmark. In it were multiple images of an object nearly identical to the one he had. When Dr. Rudolf Olson of Carolina examined the artifact, he concluded, quote, to describe the Bob White object in the simplest possible way, I think you can say it is an agglomeration of rapidly cooled droplets or particles of an aluminum silicon alloy. With such an unusual structure, I can only speculate on how it was formed. It turns out that this artifact was free-formed, or more precisely, it was somehow cast in a zero-g environment without the use of a mold. It has been to over 15 labs and universities over the past 21 years, including Los Alamos, 
Sally, New Mexico, etc. If the artifact had been on a machine or a grinder of some sort, there would inevitably have been forensic evidence left upon the artifact. All we know is that it was in a molten state when ejected into a vacuum under extreme pressure within extremely cold conditions. Although Bob White's artifact rarely gains any attention anymore, it is clearly a most compelling piece of evidence in support of the possibility of alien visitation. We previously covered an intriguing discovery made within a forest in Oklahoma, discovered by David Campbell and his wife while following up on a curious lead. This discovery, as previously discussed, is a compelling link to Waffle Rock, another anomalous relic we've previously covered. Embedded in the dirt where it struck the ground many years prior, numerous specialists have postulated that it could be a fragment of an artificial craft which disintegrated in the sky. What was astonishing regarding David's discovery was the similar structure of the object which they discovered, also partially buried and scattered amongst the woods, possibly the debris of this once enormous craft, created using an intricate layering design of unknown metals, minerals and alloys. Although further studies of this compelling discovery have yet to be established, it is with understandable caution that those with knowledge of the area move forward. It must be noted that Waffle Rock, once a local landmark, had attracted a flurry of attention from geologists, scientists and ufologists who had begun to ponder its unique and otherworldly characteristics. That was until the United States government moved in and submerged the artifact under several meters of water. The entire town which had built up around this ancient object were forced out to make way for a reservoir which flooded the entire area. We have therefore undoubtedly been compelled to research further regarding David's amazing discovery, also due to our extensive understanding of the studies undertaken upon Waffle Rock and this site's similarities with such. And unsurprisingly, we've not been disappointed with what's been unearthed. It seems folks have been fully aware of the unusual, quote, mineral deposits within the Oklahoma area for quite some time. It seems possible that the entire area is an ancient crash site of a once enormous alien craft. Known as the Oklahoma Mystery Stones, could these unexplainable fragments have once been part of an ancient spaceship? Found throughout Oklahoma, they are often mistaken for man-made objects, this clearly being due to their artificial appearance. And Oklahoma is not the only place we feel there could indeed be fragments of an ancient alien craft which crashed here on Earth. The founder of Mystery History gained access to detailed sonographic imagery showing the bottom of the Baltic Sea late last year. And now, due to the findings which were chased up by mainstream media outlets in early January, several other independent investigators surrounding Ocean X's discovery have arrived at the same suspicions. We strongly feel, due to our research, that the Baltic Sea anomaly is but a fragment of a much larger crash area which covers the seabed. Could these two objects have been part of the same ancient event? It seems while trying to solve one mystery surrounding these anomalies, you will often be confronted with several more. As always, thanks for watching. The infamous Julian Assange has made comments in the past related to the announced release of many of his controversial intelligence leaks. He has now stated that there will be UFO-related materials. Recently, WikiLeaks revealed alleged compromised Department of Defense cable communications indicating that US armed forces may be in the midst of a secret war with UFOs. According to the sources that were revealed, there was an all-out alert issued by Air Force Space Command after the emergence of a large flotilla of airborne unidentified objects from the floor of the southern seas of the Antarctic. 
This armada of unknown objects headed toward Guadalajara, Mexico. It is said that Julian Assange has been falsely accused of sexual assault charges by authorities in Sweden which resulted in his arrest in Great Britain. That one of his accusers, Anne Radin, has fled and is presently in hiding, among the Palestinians, is a strong indication that the charges, according to those familiar with government tactics, is a ploy to silence Assange's evidence. US warplanes are said to have been deployed to meet a massive fleet of UFOs on the 10th of June 2004, and all radar systems intensified on the inbound targets, the massive fleet supposedly then resubmerged into the Antarctic Oceans. Recently, another massive emergence of the unknown objects headed toward the southern tip of South America and flew over Chile. Experts say that the immediate threat posed by these huge displays is the dangerous waves they generate as they surface which is capable of sinking oceanic vessels. In the most recent appearance of the UFO armada from the Antarctic Southern Ocean, one cruise ship was nearly capsized with 160 aboard while another vessel was overturned with a crew of 60 with only 20 rescued survivors. This story was originally released by the European Times Online which had reported that the Russian president was receiving intelligence briefings indicating that the US was involved in secret military confrontations with massive UFO formations originating from underwater bases in and around the Antarctic Oceans. These events corroborate a number of other incidents over the past recent years. In 1991 a wave of UFO sightings swept over Mexico City during the widely awaited eclipse. The luminous objects were recorded by many handheld video cameras owned by citizens and offered to TV news crews. In October 13, 2010 the dramatic appearance of UFO activity over New York City caused the Air Force to shut down air traffic over the city for 24 hours. Thousands of witnesses stood spellbound as they watched UFOs in the skies over the city. Commonly known as unidentified submerged objects USOs, there have been numerous reports over the last four decades of startling appearances of underwater objects suddenly emerging and harassing ships and aircraft. The late Ivan T. Sanderson, a well-known TV personality on animal behavior as well as a former intelligence officer during World War II, published more than one book on the subject considerably ahead of his time. Friends close to him allege that he never gave up his research on USOs, and may even have been viewed as a dangerous nuisance by his former espionage employers. Sanderson contracted a rare cancer that ended his life quickly like so many others who have been deemed inconvenient to sensitive government matters. A massive sighting of USOs terrified several people on the California coast. Police received phone calls from frightened citizens telling them of bright objects emerging from the Pacific and flying into the night sky at rapid speeds. There is a very curious and questionable history of Navy involvement and lost aircraft over the Antarctic continent that compels me to look further. I will keep you all posted. Thank you.